Hey folks, welcome back. Alright, so uh, to pick up where we left off, we're going to reset everybody because I think the last video ended with the Necromancer. So we'll jump right into the player turns. So I think we'll start with the wizard. Alright, so the first thing we do for the wizard, since he's not in the monastery, is we pull an event card. And there are grim tidings. Draw a quest and roll a die to determine its location. Alright, so this is our first quest card of the day. Alright, so our first quest is... Collaborators. People accuse each other of aiding the necromancer. Uncover the truth before they tear each other apart. Or the real collaborators complete their plan. So the action is to spend one secrecy for one uh, completion token, one progress token, and it's only going to take one progress token to complete, uh, and it gives us a time limit of four. So if we complete it, we get a treasure chest. If it expires, each hero draws an event card, so we don't want that to happen. So that's going to go up there, and now it is in play. So for the wizard's action, we could do one of two things. We could either deal with this quest now for his action to spend the secrecy and gain the uh, gain the token. Or what I would prefer to do, actually we have to do the location. That's my fault. We have to roll. So getting ahead of myself. So we got a two. So the location is going to be based on the village as if it were the necromancer so actually the quest is in this location it's in the ruins so I'll, I'll move this down here so that we know so the wizard can't even deal with that quest but the nymph can if we want to keep her there for this turn which is it's a pretty bad area at this point so alright um, for the wizard then it makes it pretty simple now I could search the castle, but he's got nothing going on. So we're, what we're going to do is we're going to hide. So by hiding, it's going to allow us to refresh all of his abilities, which he absolutely needed to do. And he would also be able to gain secrecy up to five, but he's already at five, so he doesn't gain any more. So that ends his action and that ends his turn so we should probably move to I would say let's go with the rogue we'll do him next okay so our rogue is in the mountains now with the unholy aura so to start his turn he's gonna have to pull an event card and he pulls panic Add a time marker to the, a quest currently in play. And if there's no quest in play, then instead draw a quest and roll a die to determine where it is. Alright, so we have another quest related event. So we're going to have to put a timer marker on our quest. So now we've got one. Every time the Necromancer's turn comes around, you add another uh, timer marker to that quest. So we've got, we've got some time still. We should be able to resolve it this round, hopefully, if not next. But, so he's done his event. His action is going to be to, hmm, he's probably going to want to search again, I think. Although he doesn't have any search bonuses uh, in his tactics, so we're going to have to just roll one die. Alright, so, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. He's only get, he only gets one die for this roll, so he needs to beat a search difficulty of four. And we rolled a five, so he's success. So he found something, and based on the map, in the mountains, he receives a treasure chest. Alright, so he gets a treasure chest, but normally he could just hold on to it and then at any point 
turn it in for a, a skill card. So I think we're going to go ahead and do that right now just to get him another skill. So we'll just turn this in. So we'll draw the top card off the Rogue Power Card deck and see what he gets. So he gets a Shadow Cloak. It's like a passive ability bonus. Plus one die when eluding. So that's, that's pretty good. So that goes in his Pool of Powers. And his end of turn effect, he's got this Unholy Aura, which just has a passive minus one die when fighting, so there's nothing more to do there. And he is done. So I guess we'll move on to probably the Druid. Let's get him into the mix. Okay, so we're going to take the Druid right into the heart of the ruins, where it seems like everybody's, everybody's meeting up. So normally he would gain secrecy, but he's already at uh, six, so he's above five, so he doesn't gain any. His sprite form doesn't help him here because he's in with the necromancer, so he's definitely going to get impacted by the spies. And the corruption doesn't really do anything; it's just it's just a blight on the area, no bonuses. So, but you can you can destroy it, but I'm not going to worry about that yet. So he's got the quest here so he's going ahead and he's going to spend a secrecy down to five and resolve this quest so he's going to get a treasure chest and he's going to immediately draw a skill card so let's see what he gets okay so the druid takes the top skill card off his deck and he gets another form tree form Deactivate all forms and op optionally activate. Gain two grace at the start of your turn. Your actions can only be to hide or use a druid power. Alright, so that's not bad. But in this sprite form we can't we can't gain grace. So I don't think we're we're in trouble from a grace perspective with the druid. So we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and end his turn here. So what's gonna happen is he's gonna take a hit on secrecy for the necromancer and a hit on secrecy from the spies so he's actually gonna go down two to three so that ends his turn there's no end of turn effects other than that and then we have our nymph so we will do her her action now okay so for the nymph we have to start with an event card and we draw a metamorphosis. Randomly select one of your powers. Spend one grace or place the selected power at the bottom of its deck and draw a card from the same deck. Hmm, that's an interesting one. So let's see what we can do. All right, since the nymph has a heal ability, I think we'll just go ahead and spend a grace because I don't, I don't really want to give up any of her skills because I like them. So we'll take that and then uh, finish out the uh, the event that way. So see what we can do with her move. All right. So for the nymph's action, we're going to move her. I don't like her here. So she is going to move one space to the swamps, and she's also going to gain a secrecy for moving. So she goes back up to five. Uh, there's no end of turn effects for her, so she is done, and that ends the heroes phase. So to the necromancer, so he starts out with darkness going up to three. We roll a necromancer die, and he gets a six. So he's going to have a couple of different people that he's going to go towards. So he sees the nymph, the wizard, the druid, and the rogue. So the closest person to him is the druid. So he's going to stay stay where he's at. And he's going to spawn another another blight. So he is in the ruins, and the ruins gains another set of spies. There's all sorts of spies in the ruins. Okay, so that would mean two secrecy down. Eek. Okay. So that ends the Necromancer's turn. 
and we go back to the heroes again. Okay, back to the heroes. Start with the refresh, and we will go with probably the rogue to start again. Alright, so he he first starts out with an event card. Urgent plea. Draw a quest and roll a die to determine a location, then add a time marker to it. So let's draw a quest card. Alright, so our first quest here is Secret Convoy. Rumors say that the necromancer has located a powerful artifact but hasn't yet transported it to his lair. Steal it from the convoy to claim it for yourself. So for an action we need to elude versus a five. And each success is one, I guess one completion token, so it only takes one to finish this. If we fail, lose the secrecy. If we complete it, we get an artifact. Expires, we also gain a uh, another darkness. So, secret convoy. Let's see where this convoy is. So I'll roll the die, and I get a four, so a four puts this in the castle. So there we go, in the castle. Which is good, because we have somebody there already. Alright, so... We need to... I think we're going to search with the... Uh, we're going to search with the rogue again. So, let's give it a roll. Alright, so the rogue has got to do a search action, and he needs a 4 or better. And he gets a 6, so he's successful. And according to the map tile for the mountains, he gets an artifact. All right, it's the first one of these. Let's see what we get. And we get a warhorn. Here is at your location. Roll plus one die when fighting or looting without a tactic. So his basic attack without a tactic is two die, which is not too bad. All right, cool. So that will end the rogue's turn. And let's see, I guess we can go on to the wizard. Alright, so so the wizard, he gets to go now, and for him we will pull his event card. And he gets a shambling horror, so he's got to do combat. So compare his secrecy. So his secrecy is at 5, and it is a mummy. So he needs to roll a defense of 6 or an elude of 4. So he has probably going, he's probably going to have to elude. Okay, so we're going to do, we're going to cast invisibility again. So like before, his, uh, it's a tactic. We're going to activate it, and now he gets plus two in eluding, plus two dice when eluding. So we're going to, we're going to throw on invisibility. He's going to roll two dice, plus his normal one. We'll see how that goes. All right, let's let's roll here. So he needs an elude, an elude of four. He rolls success on all three dice. So the mummy is gone, and now we can do his action. So for his action. We are going to, wow, so he's got, he's invisible, so even better. So for the secret convoy, we just need to roll uh, an elude versus a five. And each success is one success token. So we just need to get a five or better here. And we can close out this secret convoy. And he gets a six, a five, and a two. So he's successful. We don't have to put the one on it because... It's already uh, it's already complete, and he gets an artifact. That's nice. Okay, so for his artifact, we draw wing boots. Exhaust during your turn to move to an adjacent location. So it's a it's a free movement. So we'll leave that with with our wizard, and we will end his turn. All right. So I think we're gonna I think we're going to go with the druid next. So let's start his turn up, see what event he gets. And he gets a desperate bargain. Choose one. Destroy a blight, 
or draw a power card or raise your secrecy to default then choose one spend two grace or discard an item or plus one darkness so for the druid I think what he'll do is destroy I think he's going to destroy a blight so he's going to destroy one of these spies because there's already three in the ruins and then he has to spend two grace or discard item or move uh, gra um, darkness up one so I'm going to move darkness up to four alright so the druid is getting out of here Oh, okay, so normally you lower his secrecy down by one when you start the turn with the Necromancer, but on his at the end of his previous turn, I lowered him down by one for the Necromancer, so I'm not going to do it again because um, that's double counting. So I should have when he ended his turn last last turn, he should have went down for the spies one, and at the start of this turn, since he's still in the Necromancer space. He's going to, uh, he would have gone down in others, but since I did his two, it, he's, he's good. So I'm getting him out of here. He's going to the village. He's still in sprite form, so he doesn't have to deal with the shades. That's going to gain him a secrecy back up to four and end his turn. All right, so we're going to finish up with the nymph. She's going to draw her event card, and she gets the black banner. Count the blights in your location. There's one. So we have an archer. She needs to attack him for four or elude for four. Or defend for four, elude for four. So what can we do here? Let's fight with two die. So we'll fight. We need a four. So she's going to fight with two die to defeat the black banner. All right, so again, she needs to beat the archer with a four. And she rolls a six and a three, so she's successful. So that event has been successfully defended. And now, now we're going to take our nymph out of the swamp and over to the castle. So that will end her turn. There's no blights there, so we're in pretty good shape. All right, so now it's on to the necromancer. All right, so the start of the necromancer's turn, he goes up, one darkness, we roll his die, he gets a two, nobody's secrecy is at that, is that low, so he doesn't see anybody, so he moves the direction of the two, and the two is the swamp, so he walks over to the swamp and he's going to create a blight, and in the swamp, he creates confusion. Okay, so what confusion? I think it's the first time I've put this one up today. No tactics. So you can't use tactics here. And if we try to defeat it and we don't, we lose a turn. So swamp's getting ugly, but I don't really like what's going on in the swamp anyway. It's not a lot of good stuff to search. So the necromancer had a pretty pretty light turn it's good he finally got out of the ruins um, I definitely want to search the ruins again because there's two keys so what I think we'll do is we'll go one more hero around and then we'll we'll end this video so let's go back to the heroes alright let's refresh everybody and we will start off with let's start with the nymph this time I think so what she's gonna do is she's gonna use gust and the gust tactic is gonna let us um, search twice but let's see what we got to do her event first so let's see how that turns out but I think that's what we're gonna do so her event is a horde compared to secrecy so her secrecy is five four plus so it's a small horde um, four combat three three of age so she is better at combat so we'll do two dice we'll do her vent bow fight off this horde. Okay, so for the horde, we need a four or better with her bent bow, 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 one of the other, I think it's bow. I don't know why I keep calling it bow. Six and a five, all right, so that's a, 
That's a big win. All right, so she got past the horde, and now we're going to we're going to go do that gust, I think. All right, so she's in the castle. She's going to use her gust ability, so we're going to exhaust it, and we're going to search twice. So remember, she gets default is one die, so I've got to beat search difficulty of two, which is pretty easy. So let's uh, let's go up here. Search difficulty two. First search, she gets a four. Let's see what she finds. All right. So in the castle, we get vanishing dust. All right. So all right. So vanishing dust. It's basically um, she fails an elusive uh, an illusion evasion. If she fails an evasion roll, she uh, she gets to throw the dust down, and it's an automatic success. So that'll go on her on her character in her inventory, and we get to search again. So we just need two or better. And we get a six, so she gets another. In the castle, she gets a tome. What is a tome? All right, she gets a tome. This is, uh, this is an item from one of the expansions, so it's a tome of retraining. What this will uh, allow uh, the user to do is put one of their powers on the bottom of their power deck and then take the top two cards and keep the top two. So you basically turn in one skill and gain two. So that's we're definitely going to do that. And I think she's probably going to give that... She's going to give that to our wizard. They're on the same space. Now, an action like this is called a free action. So we can, if you're on the same space, you can you can exchange items at will. It doesn't count as a, as an action or a turn. So she's going to give that to our wizard. She'll probably give him the powder too because, like I said, this is going to be the last turn. So uh, he's going to need it. All right. So she's uh, she's done, and that's going to end her turn. So we'll we'll go to the wizard next. Okay. So for our wizard, hmm. What I'm going to do is. I'm going to use his winged boots, and I'm going to exhaust them. Because this is a free, a free action, because I'm going to move him. So I'm going to move him to an area that I know has keys, um, even though it's going to be a little bit more difficult to search. So I'm going to send him to the forest. Actually, no. I'm going to send him to the mountains. And then I'm going to spend this Book of Retraining the Tome of Retraining, and I'm going to discard his Teleport. I'll we'll put that on the bottom of the wizard stack, and I'm going to draw the top two cards, and these I get to keep. So we get a Rune of Misdirection, which de deactivate all runes and then activate this. Roll twice for the Necromancer movement and choose one, so we get to kind of guide him. And Fiend Fire, which is Exhaust to Fight with Five Dice. So this is a, this is a good one. It's a big header. So we will... That's good. Good draw. Okay, so now let's go and do uh, his event and see what happens. So we draw the event card. Unfriendly eyes. Count the blights in your location. There is one blight. Spend one secrecy or lose one grace. So the wizard will spend a secrecy. Go down to four. That was an easy one. All right, and so for his action, he is going to search. So we need a, it's a search difficulty of four. So he only gets one die, so hopefully he uh, he's successful. Here. He gets a six. Nice roll. All right, here we go. Mountains, what do we get? We get a supply cache. All right, let's see. What, what does the supply cache do? So a supply cache uh, lets you draw two power cards, keep one, and place the other one on the bottom of your deck. So wizard gets to draw two power cards. One, two... We'll keep one and put the other on the bottom of the deck. So deactivate owners. Roll one die when a blight is created. If you roll a six, destroy it. Exhaust at any time, refresh all your other powers. This is huge for him. So we'll keep this. And we'll put this one on the bottom of the deck. Alright, so Wizard's turn is over. And actually what I forgot to do was give him give him another secrecy because he moved so he's gonna go back up to his five at default and his turn is over alright so we have our rogue now 
he's going to go, he's going to draw his event. His event is Panic. Add a time marker to the quest currently played. If there's no quest in play, which there isn't, say draw a quest and roll a die to determine its location. And then add a marker to it. So there's Panic. Chaos. Ghoul infestation. Sweet. The ghouls have grown so numerous, they are starting to attack the living for food. Call their numbers to keep the people safe. Fight versus four. Each success is progress token, so there's two, so we need to beat this twice. If we complete, draw a search result. If it expires, we go up another uh, darkness. So let's let's find out where this, this bad boy is going. So the undead are in number four, which is in the castle. They all seem to like the castle. And we have to put a uh, timer token on it as well. So that's his event. And he is basically going to search. So might as well just go ahead and do the search. So he gets one die. He rolls a four. He's successful. And he's in the mountain. So he gets a key, our first key. Alright, so the key, like I said in the beginning, is what we need to take to basically unlock the chest holding the artifact. So we need three of these though. So here's key number one is going to go on his uh, in his inventory, and he needs to keep uh, keep going with that. So his uh, his turn's over. We'll go to the druid and finish him up. So the druid who ran last turn to the village is going to draw an event card. His event is a vile messenger. So we have to... We can't evade him, we have to attack him for four. So defend for four, rather. So the druid has... Hmm... He has a companion. So, he's going to use his animal companion. Fight with two. Exhaust if you fail. So we're going to fight with two die, and we'll exhaust the card if we fail. So we need to defend. We need to defend a four. And we failed, so our, our animal companion was not strong enough, and our failure costs us one darkness. The so darkness moves up to six. And the druid is going to, for his turn, get, um, wow, he's not, he's not doing too well. He's going to, he's going to search. And again, he's in sprite form, so this shade isn't going to bother him. So he's going to search. He needs a three. Three search difficulty, so we'll just roll him up real fast. And he rolls a two, so he fails in his search, and his turn is over. So that's all the heroes. And then we'll just finish up with the Necromancer's turn now. Alright, so the Necromancer moves the Darkness Meter up to seven. We roll a movement die for him. He gets a two. Everybody's safe, so he just goes in the direction of the map. So he goes to the village, and now he's going to create a blight. So in the village... He creates webs. So, by putting webs in the village, you lose a turn when you leave. So, we're kind of, he's kind of sticking our guys here. So, that's the end of his turn. Well, there you have it. Darkest Night Necromancer Bundle. I uh, hope you enjoyed the playthrough. I think I think I did, did okay. I think uh, as far as uh, working towards the uh, kill the necromancer but you know one key after all that searching so you can see the difficulty here and, and how long it's going to take um, to get through this so I, I would probably have to post another oh, six or seven videos maybe more just to finish this series so um, and I'm sure um, most of you already have a pretty good idea of whether or not you like the game and are interested in it and if it's something you like and you pick it up for yourself it's not something you need to, to, to get a big group to play as you can see it's it's more than manageable to play solitaire, which uh, which is a huge selling point for these types of games. So, um, well, I guess that about wraps it up. So, I guess I will see you at the next video, and I hope you enjoy. And thanks for watching.